What if I told you the best state manager for React has been around since the beginning of the web over 30 years ago? It's search query parameters, and I recently found a package that makes using these super easy, sorts out all of the hard stuff for you like parsing with type safety, defaults, throttling, and a load of edge cases, and the best part is it works with most React frameworks. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you're already using a search parameter, so while you're here, go ahead and subscribe. Here's a terrible user experience. Let me know if you've seen this before. Here I have a product page, and if I select something different for the size here and the color, and then we refresh the page, you can see those values go back to their defaults. The same thing would happen if I try and bookmark this link, send it to someone else, or even go forwards and backwards in the history. This is because I'm currently storing this information in use state in React, which is in memory, so when we refresh the page, it goes back to the default values that we provided, which in my case is a medium for the size, black for the color, and one for the quantity. If I just make one small change to this hook though and change it from use state to use query state, then we give it a query parameter name. In my case, this one will be size. And then we also pass through a default value here, which I'll set back to medium. And then I'll do the same thing for the color value as well. And now what you can see is as I change the values on this page, this information is stored in the URL using query parameters. Now I can go backwards and forwards, I can refresh the page, I could bookmark this link or send it to someone, and that information is stored and persisted. Search query parameters really are the OG state manager with persistence. Now, as you may know, use query state is not a React hook, despite being used in the exact same way as use state. It's actually coming from a package called Nux. Nux is a type safe search param state manager for React, and as you can see by the logos on the documentation, it supports most of the major frameworks. We have Next.js, React Router, Remix, and then just V with React. The only one missing on this list is Tanstack, and that's because Tanstack is absolutely awesome, and it has its own first party type say search parameter support. If you want that same developer experience in the other frameworks, choose Nux. Installing it is super easy, just add it via the package manager of your choice, and just before we can start using it, we do need to set up an adapter so it can work with your framework's routing system. Luckily, this is super easy. For me, I'm on Next.js app router, so I'll go to the adapter section of that documentation. Then we can see we have Next.js app router instructions, all we need to do is import a Nux adapter into our layout.tsx and wrap our application with it. As you can see, I've done that in my code base here, so now I'm ready to take advantage of all of the powerful features of Nux. The first one of those features is parsing. This can be a real headache to try and implement yourself, as if you don't know, all query parameters are technically strings. Thankfully though, Nux has a load of built-in parsers to help us out. In this modal demo here, which is another common use case for query parameters, you can see that when our modal is open here, we update the query parameter with its state. This means if the user refreshes the page, the modal will stay open on refresh, so they're seeing the exact same information they were before. Now there's currently two issues with this. The first one is we're seeing a type error here, as the default value I've passed to my use query state hook is a boolean, but use query state is expecting a string since all query parameters are strings. The second one is since it's not doing any parsing, we could actually put any value as our modal equals true here, and it will see that string as truthy, and my modal will stay open. So we need to tell Nux how to pass this as a boolean. Luckily, doing that is super simple. All we need to do is get rid of our options here for default value. Then we'll say pass as boolean, which is imported from the Nux package. Then we can say with default, and then we'll pass back false in there. If I go ahead and save this now, what you'll see if I refresh the page over here is it's no longer treating that random string as true as it can't pass it into a correct boolean. So it's going back to its default value of false. Now, if I open the modal, we do still get the modal equals true, but it's now correctly seeing it as a boolean. Is open here is a boolean. Set is open is expecting a boolean, and we no longer have any type errors. So we now have full type safety with our search params. On the documentation, you can see Nux supports a ton of built-in parsers for things like strings, numbers, literals, arrays, dates. And if those primitives aren't enough, you can actually encode all of the data as JSON using something like Zod, or you can even create your own custom parser. Next, let me show you how Nux solved some of the pain points of query parameters that you probably didn't even know about. Browsers actually rate limit the history API, which means if you have something fast updating like an input, you will need to queue the updates to the URL while also maintaining the state so that the UI updates quickly. Even more of a headache is the fact that not all of the browsers have the same rate limit and Safari is by far the worst. In fact, the author of this library has a blog post on the solution for this, which I'll leave linked down below. But the long story short is use Nux. They've solved this edge case for you. Now, most of the time, the default throttle will be enough for you. But if you're making something like a server request or making fetch calls, every time a parameter changes, you may want to increase that throttle. In this example, my query parameters actually update the server component. But to do that, they need to send a server request on each change. 
So you can see if I have something fast updating like an input, this could become quite wasteful as we're sending a lot of requests. So we could set the throttle to something like five seconds. To do that, we need to pass our hook an option. Now in my coordinates example here, I'm actually using a different hook from Nux. I'm using use query state. This is useful when you have multiple values that should be updated at a similar time. In my case, latitude and longitude. To actually pass through options for this hook, all you have to do for the second argument is pass through an object of those options. If you're using the traditional hook, you can do the same thing. Or if you're using a parser with the traditional hook, you do pass as integer, or whichever parser it is, dot with options, and then the argument of that call is the options that we're about to set up. Now we can ignore shallow for now, I'll explain that in a bit, but if you want to set up a throttle, all you have to do is pass through the throttle milliseconds option. I'll set this to something like 5,000. Now if I go ahead and save this, you can see when I update this input here, it doesn't update the server component immediately or the query parameter that we have up here. It's actually going to wait for those 5,000 milliseconds to send that update. But you can see that the input worked perfectly and there was no lag there. And there we go, you can see after those 5,000 milliseconds, it has updated our server component, it sent off that request. And this is also really useful when you're fetching information on a parameter change, like maybe something like the page or a server side search, anything like that. You don't wanna be fetching the data every time an input updates, you might want to add some sort of throttle. On the topic of options, another really useful one is history. This changes how query updates change the browser history. Now the default is set to replace. This just means that it changes the current entry with the new query string. So you can see in my paginated table example, another really common use case of query parameters, pagination. When we hit next here, we go to page three, page four, and so on. And that's stored in the query parameter. So if I refresh, we see that same page and information. But if I hit the back button up here, you can see I'm taken back to the previous page as it was just changing the current entry in my history when we updated the query parameter. If I change history here to be push instead, for each update on the query string, it's going to add a new entry to the history. So it's really useful for something like navigation. So I hit next a few times here. You can see now when I hit the back button, it's going back to that previous query parameter that we set. Now, obviously this would be extremely annoying for something like an input. But when you have something like a modal or pagination, this option is perfect. Now let's take a look at how we get this information on the server side components for something like Next.js. If we go back to my coordinates example, another option you may have seen was the shallow one. Now by default, shallow is actually set to true. What this means is it doesn't send updates to the server when the query parameters are changed. It's all handled client side. You can see that here if I delete my throttle and we just have that shallow option. If I change this input and update it, my query parameter is changing, but we're not seeing the server side component actually get that new query parameter. If I set this back to false now, what you'll notice is that we'll go ahead and update. Each time my input changes, we're seeing that change on the server side as well. But to get the parameters on the server side as well, we need to create a loader. Now there's a few ways that you can actually go about doing this, but I'll be doing a Next.js specific way, which is to create a cache. All the cache allows me to do is actually use these parameters in nested server components. You can see on that documentation here though, they have examples for Next.js, API routes, Remix and React Router, and anything else that you need. You probably don't need to bother with this if you're doing client side only. So in my code base for the coordinates example, the first thing I had to do was use create search params cache. You can see that's a function that's imported from nux slash server. And you want to make sure that you're importing from nux slash server when doing this, as you want to avoid a use client directive in the nux code base. Once we've got that, we need to set up the parsers that we want. So I have coordinates parsers here. It's simply an object with latitude and longitude, and we're using pass as float from nux slash server. And then we have the default values. Once we've done that, we simply wrap that parser in that function that we just imported. Then in our page.tsx of our server component, we need to pass the query parameters using our newly created cache. So you can see here, I'm using the coordinates cache. I simply say await coordinates cache.pass, and then I pass in the search parameters, which we get from Next.js. Then when I actually want to go ahead and use these search parameters anywhere, it's literally as simple as calling coordinates cache.all, and we can go ahead and destructure that and get the latitude and longitude and read those values. Or you can go ahead and get the values separately as well using a get function. Then on the client side, all we need to do to make sure that the query parameters are updating the server component is set an option of shallow to false, like I explained earlier. And also you can see here when I'm using the use query states hook, I actually use the coordinate passes from what we set up earlier to ensure that we're sharing the same values and the client side and the server side agree on what it should be passed as. Once you've got this set up, you'll see what I saw earlier, where it updates the server component after that throttle time. That's a good intro to Nux. Now there is a few more powerful features which you can check out on that documentation. There's a serialize function which will actually help you create these search parameters when you have something like a link. There's URL keys to actually create shorter search parameters that then map back to longer variable names. And there's even guides on how to manage SEO and best practices for reusing hooks. 
Nux really does make managing state parameters way easier. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. While you're there, subscribe, and as always, see you in the next one.